This is going to be an overview of the book of Esther. One of only two books in the Bible named after a woman. The other one would be Ruth. But Esther is a picture of the Laodicean church period. When people are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And what you have in this story is you have Queen Vashti, a picture of the bride of Christ in rebellion. And you have Esther, a picture of the Jew. And the Lord once again dealing with the Jews after the bride, Vashti, is taken away. So this would remind you of the Lord rapturing the church before he once again deals with the Jews in the tribulation. But the book of Esther doctrinally pictures the end of the times of the Gentiles. And because a Gentile queen gets dethroned, that would be Vashti. And a Jewish woman gets throned. That would represent Israel. There you have a picture of how the church will go into apostasy and will leave in a rapture before the Lord begins dealing with Israel again in the tribulation. You have another character named Haman in this book who is a type of Antichrist and he is anti-Semitic. He wants to destroy the Jews just like the Antichrist will want to destroy the Jews. Then you have another guy named Mordecai who Haman wants dead and hung on the gallows. Mordecai will picture the nation of Israel in the tribulation who will be hunted by the Antichrist. But in chapters 1 through 5 you have a state of siege. Haman plots to kill the Jews. In chapter 6 through 10, you have a state of salvation. You have the death of Haman and the Jews delivered. So Esther chapter 1, you're going to see the king's banquets. And this is King Ahasuerus, king of Persia, which is not a name, it's a title. Ahasuerus is his title. He's a big shot, and if you read the chapter, he likes to show off his material wealth. He is a man who would... Have no understanding of Colossians 3, 2, which says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. He likes to show off his, this, his stuff that he has. And in this chapter, you're also going to see Queen Vashti's refusal. The king wanted to show off her beauty to his boys, but she refused. And in uh, Esther 1, 10 through 12, it says, On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded... Mehuman, Bista, Harbona, Bigtha, Abagtha, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth. And his anger burned in him. So the king calls for the wise men. And they tell him that she didn't just do him wrong. But also did all the other men wrong. Because the women would start refusing to obey their husbands. Just by learning by example of watching Vashti. And in uh, verses 15 through 17. It says, What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law? Because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains. And Mamukin answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes when it shall be reported. And the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti, Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. So they told the king that he should give his royal estate to a woman better than she. And the saying pleased the king, so then he sent letters to all the king's provinces telling them that the women should obey their husbands. That's what he tells them in verse 22. And the Bible way for marriage is that way. But of course, you know, you need to be a better man than this king here. But, I mean, the Bible way for marriage is for the husband to love his wife enough to die for her and for the wife to let her husband be the head of the house. And you can read about that in Ephesians 5, 24 through 25, where it says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And you can tell when a woman is a Bible believer because she will go along with these verses which is a very hard verses for 
a woman to go along with. But in chapter 2, you're going to see Esther is chosen as queen in place of Vashti. So e Esther 2, 1 and 2. After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king. So let this make you realize that even though the king is kind of a jerk, he's not wanting to marry some hoe. I mean, he's looking for a fair young virgin. He's like, go find me a beautiful, sweet young lady. Check her Facebook and Instagram. Make sure she's not taking half-naked pictures and doing selfies, making sensual faces, you know. He doesn't want some little skank. And First uh, Timothy 2, 9 says, In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Taking selfies and making faces looking like you're selling yourself is not shamefacedness. And if a man has any sense, then he doesn't want his wife showing off her body on social media. But Esther 2, 4 says, And let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. So he's going to pick out the best one to be the new queen. And Ephesians 2, or Esther 2, 6 through 7 says, Who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Had Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So Esther is Mordecai's cousin, who he took for his own daughter. And Esther didn't tell anyone that she was a Jew. Verse 10 says, Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. So you see how Esther replaces Vashti as queen. And these two women show two attitudes toward authority. Esther is one who obeys authority, and Vashti is one who disobeys authority. And in this life, the Lord has set up authority figures. If we obey authority, then we're rewarded. And if we disobey, then we are punished. Now, sometimes your authority will tell you to disobey the final authority, which is God. And that is when you obey God rather than men. Now, in chapter 2, you also see that Mordecai hears about a plan from the king's chamberlains to kill the king. And Mordecai rats them out and ends up getting rewarded for it in chapter 6. So, you know, ratting somebody out can be a good thing if you're looking out for the safety of somebody else. Mordecai could have kept it to himself and then he wouldn't have ended up being rewarded in chapter 6. So, you know, you don't want to be some big rat going around telling on everybody, but you also don't want to cover up the sins of others or keep something secret that might could potentially hurt somebody else. And then in chapter 3, you're introduced to the man Haman. He hates the Jews, and he plots to kill the Jews. In chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. That, that's just what the devil wants. He wants his seat above everybody else. He wants to exalt his throne above the stars of God and be like the Most High. And this is very fitting for this to say this about Haman because Haman is a type of the Antichrist and he hates the Jew. In Esther 3.13, it says, And the letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and the cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Notice this is in verse 13, and it's to be done on the thirteenth day. And the number thirteen, as you know, is connected with the Antichrist. Once again, connecting Haman with the Antichrist and the tribulation. So read about the Antichrist in Revelation, you guessed it, chapter 13. He will also persecute the Jews. Now, although the Jews today are Christ rejectors and very wicked people, you need to watch out for people who seem to be in, have an extra dislike for the Jews than they do other Christ-rejecting religious people. 
But in chapter 4, when Mordecai finds out that Haman plans to kill the Jews, he begins to mourn. And in this chapter, Esther agrees to help Mordecai. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. So Mordecai wants Esther to go to the king and talk to him about making a request to know or making a request to the king to let the people of God, you know, be spared, not destroyed. And she says in verse 11, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king into the outer court who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come into the king these thirty days. So if you go to the king without being called, then you could be put to death. But Mordecai talks her into it. And he says in verse 14, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? So he lets her know that deliverance would come from somewhere else and she would miss the blessing of being involved in the Jews' deliverance. So maybe there's something you're supposed to be doing with your life, and if you don't do it, God's going to use somebody else to do it, and you're going to miss the blessing of being involved in whatever that could be. And he also says that her and her father's house would be destroyed for not doing it. So there he persuades her to make the right decision, and here's what she does in verse 15 and 16. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three, three days, night or day. Also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So she says, if I perish, I perish. There is the attitude, do what you know is right to be done, and if you perish, you perish. Uh, verse 17, so Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. And in chapter 5, when Esther enters into the presence of the king, she's accepted. She requests the king and Haman to come to a banquet that she's going to prepare, and at that banquet, she requests another banquet. And Haman is going to see Mordecai refuse to bow in his presence resulting in wrath and indignation from Haman. And imagine the Antichrist in the tribulation when the Jews will refuse to bow down to him and worship him as he claims to be God in the temple. Imagine how angry he's going to be because he's wanting worship. Then Esther 5, verses 1 and 2. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. So Esther makes requests for the king and Haman to go to a banquet she would prepare. And then at the banquet she requests that they have another banquet as we talked about. And around this time, as I said uh, Mordecai uh, is sitting in the king's gate and he doesn't bow down to Haman. So Haman plots to have Mordecai hanged on the gallows. In chapter 6, you see the tables turn. The king honors Mordecai. And what happens is the king can't sleep, so he wants someone to bring him the book of the, of the record of Chronicles. And it says in 6 and verse 1, On that night, could not the king sleep? And he commanded to bring the book of records of the Chronicles, and they were read before the king. So, read your Bible before bed, and this will help you go to sleep. Go to Chronicles and start reading all those names, and it will make your eyes get heavy pretty quick. And in verse 2, the king finds out something about Mordecai. In Esther chapter 6 and verse 2, it says, And it was found written that Mordecai had told of 
Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hold on the king Ahasuerus. So the king wants to honor Mordecai because Mordecai saved the king. He wants, and he asks, uh, the king asks Haman's, ask Haman what they should do to whom the king delighteth to honor. And Haman thinks he's talking about himself. Haman thinks he's talking about him because Haman is full of himself. He had no idea the king was talking about his worst enemy, Mordecai, the man he hates. So Haman says in verse 7, while Haman still thinks that the king's talking about him, it says, Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighteth to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king uses to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man with all whom the king delighteth to honor, and bring him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said. And do even so to Mordecai the Jew that sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai, and brought him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. So how about that? Haman hated Mordecai to the point he wanted him dead, but now Mordecai gets exalted above Haman. Reminds me of the fact that even though the devil hates the Lord Jesus Christ, one of these days the devil is going to bow down before God Almighty. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father, Philippians 2.11, and that includes the devil. And in es uh, Esther chapter 7, it's finally going to reveal, Esther's finally going to reveal Haman's plot at the banquet. She's going to spill the beans at the banquet to the king. So Esther 7 and verse 2, And the king said again unto Esther, on the second day, at the banquet of wine, what is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee, and what is thy request? And it shall be performed, even to the half of the kingdom. And Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, and to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he, and where is he, that durst presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. Notice Esther calls Haman the adversary. And First Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. In Matthew thirteen thirty nine, the devil is called the enemy. And in 1 John three twelve, he is called that wicked one. All these names are also given to Haman. As she said, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. So, there you go. All three of those characteristics are given to both Haman and to the devil. And in verse 10, So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. So the tables turn. Instead of Mordecai getting hanged, hanged Haman gets hanged. So he, Haman just laid wait for his own blood. In chapter 8, you will see that Esther saves the Jews and gets the king on the Jews' side. In chapter 8 and verse 7, it says, Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring, for the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. So the Jews were so protected that many became... Jews out of fear. It says in verse 17, In every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. 
And then you'll see in chapter 9 that the Jews destroy their enemies. Esther 9, 2, the Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus to lay hand on such as sought their hurt, and no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all people. Then, verse 5, thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction, and did what they would unto those that hated them. You'll see in chapter 9 that the Jews destroy their enemies. In Esther 9, 2, it says, the Jews declared themselves... The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus to lay hand on such as sought their hurt, and no man could, with, could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all people. And then you see in verse 5, Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction, and did what they would unto those that hated them. And then look down at verse 13 and 14. Then said Esther, If it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do to tomorrow, also according unto this day's decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. And the king commanded it so to be done, and the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. So you see there, Haman had it coming to him. And if you are out to hurt others, you're just hurting yourself. You're laying wait for your own blood. Then in chapter 10, you'll see how Mordecai is exalted in the absence of Haman, just like Jesus Christ will be exalted in, in the millennium after the Antichrist, who Haman is a type of, is cast into the lake of fire. And that is an overview of the book of Esther.